I was mocked for my weight in Japan. I remember the day I ran my very first marathon in my life. I had the fortune to run it in Kuroshio, Japan. It was a short 3 km run, and I ran it when I was still grossly overweight. It was freezing, I could see my breath, and snowflakes floating through the air. As I waited for my turn at the starting block, a random Japanese man came up to me and poked me in the stomach, laughed and said to me, Are you really going to run? I remember being a little taken back, how blunt he was, and I replied, Yes, I will run just slower than everyone else. At my junior high school, the first few months I was there, students repeatedly told me I looked like Santa Claus, which wasn't an unfair comparison. Younger elementary school students would poke me in the stomach and say to me, you like food, don't you? My junior high school students would poke me too and tell me, nice body, every time they saw me. Certain students would say it every time I interacted with them. They would even go so far as to stick out their own stomachs or put books under their shirts. During sports day last year, the gym teacher at my school would make a point to stare down at my stomach every time I passed him and comment about it in Japanese. One drinking party I went to a year ago, a Japanese woman said I looked like Bluto from Popeye, which I thought was a hilarious comparison. At that same party, they half-jokingly told me I shouldn't drink or eat too much, as I wouldn't want to pack on the pounds. As funny and sometimes cruel as these people were, they were also right. I was obese. Even though I was gradually losing some weight because I periodically exercised and ate healthy, I still lacked discipline. At one point, I had trained with my friend over the summer to climb Mount Fuji, running up the tsunami tower with a backpack full of water. We did that very frequently, and I got into decent shape. Decent enough I was able to climb and scrape my way to the top of Fuji, but after climbing, that intense training fell off. I would still run occasionally with other friends who encouraged me to exercise, but it wasn't enough. In December of 2022, I decided to take my health more seriously, and I began running up the tsunami tower in my town solo every day. I've missed days and at one point I was defeated and I stopped for a whole month. But I didn't give up and I'm mostly back on track now. I'm still running, lifting weights, eating healthy and eating portioned food every single day. My progress has been very noticeable and real. I've lost 75 pounds in about 10 months. The Japanese people in Kuroshio tell me I look skinny or I look handsome now. People who see me sometimes think I'm someone else, or they are shocked by my appearance. The superintendent of our district literally said to me, Tanner, you became handsome. I put that old shirt I wore when the gym teacher mocked me on, and it fits loose now. The school children seldom point out my weight, and if they do, I just laugh. Hell, my pants keep falling off, and I have to keep poking holes in my belts just to keep them on me. Old shirts are baggy and unseemly. People tell my legend. Word has spread throughout Kuroshio how I'm the crazy Canadian who runs up the tsunami tower for exercise. Students saw me running one night and word of my craziness spread throughout the local junior high school. I'm not letting the praise embolden me any more than I would want the insults to hurt my feelings. It would be a mistake for me to stop or slow down ever. I'm still overweight and I'm still not good enough, and life has a funny way of reminding me of that, but I'm fighting every day to change. That's my tale so far. It's a nice little comeback story, but there's plenty of room for improvement yet. So it's just after 6 a.m. You guys missed the tsunami siren because you were in a time lapse, but it's kind of a completely different world out there once the sun comes out. It's really beautiful. Actually, I usually run the tower at night so I don't see the tops of the houses like that. But super beautiful. So working out, losing weight, there's no magic to it. There's basically three simple rules you have to follow. You have to eat portioned food. You have to eat healthy food and you have to exercise and 
you can't out eat a bad diet because you can eat in 10 seconds what would otherwise take you an hour to burn off doing whatever physical activity. But I do believe that environment can affect and contribute to weight loss. The question I will answer is, in what ways has Japan contributed to my own weight loss? Firstly, there does exist a healthy food culture in Japan, and this is seen with many traditional Japanese meals. This diet consists largely of rice, fish, fresh seasonal vegetables, and fruit. Adopting this diet to an extent, especially for school lunch, has helped me tremendously. Japanese food and drink portion sizes are also much smaller than those in Canada and America. For example, a large soda in Japan tends to be much smaller than a western sized large soda. Finding extra large sized potato chip bags or treats like this are rare. This is certainly not to say Japan doesn't have its junk food options and fast food culture. Convenience stores are loaded with various flavors of fried chicken, pork buns, and high calorie bentos. The dangerously tasty yet unhealthy foods are easily available if you look for them. It's a little more difficult to unconsciously overindulge in Japan, but of course you can still do it. Living in the Japanese countryside in a proper house, I have access to a large workable kitchen. This is a luxury, as I think most apartments in Japanese cities have smaller kitchens. But Japanese convenience stores and grocery stores have ready-made healthy food options, salad, protein sticks, and the like, if I happen to not feel like cooking that day. I wouldn't want to live off of konbini food, but I know people who do. Japanese people also typically are quite active. Many walk or bike to work. Public transportation allows this quite easily. However, in the countryside, more people drive as it's often more convenient. But Japan also places an emphasis on sports and has an entire holiday dedicated to sports. Marathons are frequently held and encouraged as popular local events. Mountains contribute to good hiking and the sea encourages swimmers and surfers. I have adopted aspects of this more mobile lifestyle, although I still do a lot of driving. So for me personally, I took advantage of a few aspects of Japanese culture and adopted a healthier lifestyle. Obviously everything comes down to consistency and discipline, but there are stable systems in Japan which can naturally encourage that discipline if you choose to adapt to them. That's all for now, take care and be bold. Try.